Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Arius and today we'll be talking about Beam Therapeutics. We will talk about what Beam does, what their advantages are to their platform, and we'll talk about their pipeline. I'll give you a look into a new technology that Beam has that may be superior to their current technology as well as other technologies including CRISPR. Finally, I'll tell you if I own Beam, at what prices I'd be interested in buying in at, as well as what my strategy is long term with this stock in comparison with other stocks in the genomics sector. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content and leave any suggestions for new videos or critiques in the comments below and without further ado let's get into it let's start off with what beam does beam is a gene editing company that employs base editing which is a new way of editing that has certain advantages over CRISPR and other various ways of editing they are developing cures for various diseases including sickle cell disease beta thalassemia alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency glycogen storage disease 1a Stuttgart's disease along with other yet to be announced programs they are also developing allergenic or off-the-shelf CAR T cell therapies currently they have approximately 6.25 billion dollar market cap with the stock price around $170 as of today's recording. Beam has been on a tear in the past year which is shown in their 52 week range of $13 to $126 a share which means that a share price of $107 puts them down about 15% from record highs today. They have about $208 million in cash and marketable securities but I believe this does not include the additional raise of $135 million in late 2020 and that will give them additional runway. They had a net loss of about $37 million last quarter which would only give them a little more than two years left of liquidity before needing more cash. Capital. However, given the recent stock run-up, it would not be very difficult to raise additional capital, and I would expect more dilution to come as they are pretty far out from significant revenues. Finally, ARK Invest owns about 4% of the whole company in both their flagship ARK-K funds and their ARK Genomic funds, with Beam making up a decent-sized position of the ARK-G fund. They have also added Beam to the ARK fund this past week at these prices. Real quick, this right here is a picture I took of what, at least according to Google, is Beam's headquarters. It is in a part of Cambridge directly adjacent to MIT, which has become a medical company hotbed, with companies like Intellia, Takeda, Novartis, and among many others set up there. The only thing of note that I take from the picture is the lack of identification that this is in fact a beam building, and I kind of like this in comparison to many of the other medical buildings which all prominently display the company they are. It gives me the feeling that I am investing in a company that realizes they are strapped for cash and are willing to invest in drug development as opposed to putting up signs, which is obviously the right choice. Now let's move into what makes Beam's base editing platform superior to the other methods currently. On their website, they list three advantages, which I will break down more in the next slide. First, base editing provides the creation of precise, predictable, and efficient genetic outcomes at a target sequence, as well as high efficiency editing without the need for template-based homology directive repair. It also avoids the unwanted consequences of double-stranded DNA breaks, such as frequent insertions and deletions, or larger-scale genomic rearrangements. These advantages that BM has comes down to the fact that they do not make a double-stranded break for the editing process to be completed, while CRISPR does. When there are double-stranded breaks, there is a possible for off-target errors that can occur, as mentioned on the last slide. I think Beam will gain market share over time as they realize this technological advantage, especially as gene therapies move to be enacted in vivo rather than ex vivo. Right now, CRISPR Therapeutics appears to successfully have cured a woman of sickle cell disease, but this uses ex vivo editing, meaning that they could screen the cells to make certain that the correct edit has been made. However, there are many problems with ex vivo process, mostly having to do with the painful chemotherapy patients have to go through to make room for the edited cells to be implanted. This is why the gene therapy field will soon move towards in vivo therapies. This is where Beam comes in with the most accurate and surefire editing process. I think that when putting editors into someone to cure disease, you will want to choose the best and most efficient platform for the job with the lowest risk of any off-target effects. Therefore, I think Beam will take market share as they advance their therapies forward. Now I'll give a rough explanation of how it works. Beam uses a modified CRISPR protein to find the editing site, but not to cut the strands. A base editing enzyme attached to the CRISPR protein then changes a single base pair. The other strand of DNA is then nicked or cut, which prompts the body to come along and naturally repair the nick strand by matching it with the reciprocal base pair to the what was just edited onto the other strand. This cements the edit as final without requiring a double strand break. Now let's talk about what types of mutations Beam can address which as of now is only point mutations that require a certain base pair change. They can currently edit AT to GC and CG to TA. However, they are actively researching other editors such as being able to change C to G or A to T. I think that they have a good chance of success in doing this as the second editor, CBE, was developed with a specific 
intent of doing so, and with enough time and energy, the others will be developed as well. In the meantime, they have a huge market to address with their two current editors, as in total they can correct 35 of all genetic mutations associated with disease. These editors can be delivered out of the body and into the body directly in either viral vectors or lipid nanoparticles, and this provides flexibility to target different parts of the body. Now let's talk about their pipeline, which is still in early development. To give you an idea, from what I understand, CRISPR Therapeutics was in the same IND stage that Beam is now around five years ago in 2016, and CRISPR is still in clinical trials and is yet to commercialize this treatment. Now a lot of progress has happened in this space, and Beam should progress faster than CRISPR has, but they are still a long ways out. In 2020, Beam was completing IND enabling studies and have reported that they are on track to file an IND in the second half of 2021. This could create some large problems for Beam down the line. There are many companies out there developing a functional cure for sickle cell disease, and most of these companies are further along than Beam. Like Beam, most companies are taking the route of activating fetal hemoglobins, as Beam is, with their leading treatment, Beam 101. However, they are also pursuing, with Beam 102, a direct correction of the sickle cell mutation. I am very concerned with the path that Beam is taking in terms of going after a treatment that many other companies are on track to commercialize well before them. This path could lead to a product which is still revolutionary but not very valuable because a bunch of other companies have gone after the same target and completed it first. This is my main concern with Beam. They are late to the game with their first product, and then they are unable to recoup the losses of their first program and move on to other treatments, which their technology has the ability to do. Moving on, they have two allergenic CAR T cell therapies, which are essentially a new way to treat cancer. They harvest natural killer T cells from donors' bodies and edit the androgen receptors to attack cancer specifically. The allergenic portion of the name refers to harvesting the T cells from donors, editing the T cells, and then keeping them on the shelf for use on any patient, as opposed to taking the T cells from the patient themselves, editing them, and then placing them back into the patient for treatment. The allergenic way is much more cost-effective and will make these treatments more available over the coming years. Beam is developing treatments for T-cell acute lambastic leukemia, which appears to be on the cusp of IND studies, and acute myeloid leukemia, which is still in the lead optimization phase. Moving on to their in vivo treatments, delivered with lipid nanoparticles, or LMPs, they will be developing treatments for alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and glycogen storage disease 1A, which are both still in the research phase. Their final disclosed treatment at this time is for Stuttgart's disease, which will be administered via a viral vector. They do have other programs, however, they are still undisclosed at this time. This slide right here is what the investment in Beam will boil down to. Can they successfully and swiftly build out this pipeline or not? Now let's talk about that bonus technology that I was referring to earlier, and that is called Prime Editing. It was developed in Dr. David Liu's lab, the same one that developed base editing, and Beam has the rights to commercialize it. I want to pause here because I think this connection is pretty interesting. First of all, the fact that the same lab has developed two breakthroughs in gene editing technology is pretty impressive. What matters for Beam is their connection with this lab and how they have ended up with the rights to both of their breakthroughs in editing technology. It seems to be an innovative place for whatever reason, and I think it is a bullish factor for Beam to be connected with this lab for future developments. Back to prime editing, it is similar to base editing, but evolved so that it can rewrite short sequences of DNA, still without a double-stranded break. It was only discovered in October of 2019, so it is still a ways away of any effect on Beam's pipeline. This technology is still speculative in nature as it still has not been fully proven out in humans. However, it provides excellent long-term upside for Beam to realize. Finally, my conclusions. I am not sure who's going to win in the gene editing space. Right now, I think that it will be many companies who all fill some part of the market, which is in stark contrast to many of the other technology stocks that I own. I think Beam has the potential to be one of these companies due to their specialized editing technology. However, they are considerably behind some of the other players in this space, and that will cause me to temper the bet I make on Beam. But don't lose sight of the massive market opportunity that they're going after here. ARK Invest projects the monogenic disease opportunity to be worth about $2 trillion, and monogenic diseases only make up about 2% of diseases, the rest being multigene. That would mean with a PS ratio of 1, Beam would only have to get a 3% market share of the monogenic market to 10x from here and be worth $60 billion. Beam's proprietary technology, coupled with a huge market to address, will be what drives the value of this company going forward. Finally, how am I approaching this stock and the genomic sector in general? So far, I've made a few bets in the genomic sector, but right now they are just bets, where I think I have asymmetric upside for the long term. I have invested in CRISPR as well as Beam, and due to this massive market size they're going after, I think they can both be winners over the next few decades. By the way, if you haven't already, check out my pack bio video, and I'll link it in the description below. They are another company in the genomic sector that I have made a bet on. Also, let me know if you'd like to see a dedicated video about CRISPR or Invitae. Regarding my position in Beam, I will keep adding at these current prices until it was about 2% of my portfolio and then look to add on any big pullbacks or dips. My current cost basis is around $103 per share and Beam currently makes up about 1.32% of my portfolio. Real quick shout out to Mahajlo Maxa for mentioning Beam to me and I apologize for butchering your name. I want to hear from you all. What do you think of Beam? Will you invest? If so, 
what's your 2030 price target? Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe and leave a like. Also leave any feedback or video ideas in the comments below. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day.